This week we would like to emphasize again why it is so important to have less trash. And specifically this week we will talk about the issue of burning trash and the case study, so the specific example we are using, comes from Italy. Hopefully you remember what we studied about the Pacific Garbage Dryer. And uh, in case you don't, uh, I always like to use this piece of art to remind us how much plastic we use and consume and then throw away and ends up in the ocean. So this is the piece of art by Chris Jordan. This is another good illustration, well good in the sense that I think it explains well what happens. Yes, in some places we do not see the plastic pollution because the gyres are too far away but if we do look carefully in the ocean and in the places where the gyres are keeping the plastic um, together, well, we'll see that our oceans are very much polluted by us. I hope you remember what Diana Cohen said in her TED talk about plastic recycling. The first information that I think is important for you to keep in mind, because it might happen to you and to people around you, is that we put the plastic in the right bin, the recycling bin, and then we don't think about it anymore. But what happens to the plastic afterwards? This is what we're going to uh, look at today. I will start with the US, and in the case of the US, well, only 7% of the plastic is recycled. In the case of the US, the rest uh, of the plastic is turned into lesser things, right? So things that are less uh, useful or less um, smaller in terms of size as well. So for instance, uh, Diane Cohen says that a pet bottle becomes a plastic fork, right? It's smaller, takes less plastic. So what is the plastic fork going to be? I am not quite sure. Um, another aspect of what happens to the plastic is that it is sh shipped to China. Um, to be truthful with you, I am not keen on knowing what's happening in China. I already have a lot of issues with um, the Chinese government regarding human rights. So at this point in my life, I am not ready to learn any more about what's happening uh, there. <laughs> Um, and the last thing that happens to plastic is that it is incinerated, right? Incinerated, which means burnt. This is it. We're at the next main crossroad in the class and um, I'd like us to focus now on burnable trash. So the goal um, in the following couple slides and uh, for you to watch the video is to understand that burning trash is not good for the environment and for our health. Um, so as I said, we're going to be focusing on Italy this time and there people have been fighting incinerators. So incinerators are the places where you burn, where you incinerate trash. Right? So let's um, discover a little bit more about Rossano Ercolini. And uh, he's actually a teacher, a primary teacher. And um, it started all about being worried uh, about his students' health. Why? Well, burning trash creates very, very small particles, so little things in the air that goes everywhere in the body, and especially the lungs, and make people sick. One of the uh, most obvious uh, sickness is asthma, right? when you have a hard time breathing. So that's why Ercolini has been fighting for 30 years against not only the government, but also big businesses and being in Italy, yes, the Mafia. So, during his 30 years of fighting incinerators, Ercolini made sure that he explained the situation clearly. In the video, you will see that the children have books about incinerators and the risks um, that they represent. And um, also, you will see uh, that they have pamphlet for adults in the video. So explaining, right, is always the first step. Make people realize what is happening. Then he invited experts to talk about the health risks 
Um, that's definitely a great way to get people really to pay attention if you tell them that their health is at stake, is threatened, usually people start listening to you. And also he invited experts to introduce alternatives, right? So we saw that, uh, the word, the meaning of that word, excuse me, um, last week's alternatives. So what else can we do if we don't burn trash? What else? Right? What's the alternative? So um, I'd like to go a little bit more about why alternatives are important. Well, he wanted people to have knowledge, knowledge about what else they can do instead of burning trash. And he was hopeful and also he was not thinking just short term but long term. So when the projects of incinerators don't work, what do we do? Well, because he had trained, taught, explained to people uh, what else could be done, people had the knowledge to better handle garbage, right? To better take care of garbage. So they came up with a door-to-door -door waste collection system. So door to door, right? You go from door to door and people give you the different type of waste so that uh, everything is collected separately and you can recycle everything uh, the right way. So this was a big success because uh, the city of Capano Capanori, excuse me, uh, so where Ercolini lives, uh, has set a zero waste goal for 2020. So the Olympic Games, that's perfect, easy to remember. And already by now, um, so the latest data I have is for 2013, uh, they were close to zero waste by 82%. So um, Capanori is not the only city in Italy doing this. Uh, there are already 117 zero waste towns in Italy. And these 117 towns represent 3 million people. Uh, so this is something big. This is not just a one-person thing, right? So this is what the people like um, Ercolini say about their future. They say, don't burn our future, right? So don't waste, don't destroy our future. And uh, the way to destroy the future is by burning trash. Now it's time for you to watch the video about Mr. Ercolini. I have posted the link on the website, so just go onto the website and watch the video there. It should help you understand better what I have explained up until now. So now that we have talked about the US and Italy, I would like to bring the topic home. What I mean by this is I want us to think about Japan. So this is where I found the information. It's actually a um, senpai who uh, provided me with the information and as you can see it's the uh, number of incinerators in Japan, right, the trend. And um, I am not so sure how to interpret the fact that there are less and less incinerators. Uh, should I be happy? Should I be questioning this uh, decrease of incinerator? Well, this is actually one of the research questions for this week. So I hope you will find the answer uh, to my question. As the graph showed, since 2003 the number of incinerators in Japan has been decreasing. So we have less and less incinerators in Japan. But still, 1,188 incinerators in 2012 means that Japan is the developed country with the most incinerators. And I bet you can see that there is a big gap between us, number one, and the US, number two, right? So clearly we are burning a lot of trash. So since we're talking about human rights, I want to point, point out that having rights means also that you have obligations. And one of these obligations is to think. The next time you go and buy your lunch, think. Do you need the throwaway chopsticks? Do you need the plastic bag? I know that some of you don't cook, so you have to buy lunch outside of your house. 
but do you really need all these little extra things? Couldn't you just bring your own, your own chopsticks and your own bag? So please, next time you buy your lunch, stop and think before taking what is offered to you. My motivation for telling you this is that uh, almost ev after every single lunch, this is what we see at our university. The amount of trash is just overwhelming. And if you look closely, it is mainly plastic. As you've noticed, the number of questions for this video are limited this week because we want you to spend time doing research. We have three research questions. Why is the number of incinerators decreasing in Japan? Number two, what are other universities doing to reduce their amount of trash? Uh, it's always a good thing to look um, at what's happening in other places, so maybe we can learn from them. And knowing the situation at our own university, what could be done to reduce the amount of trash?